everybody, I want to introduce you to a young man who came onto the channel wall. And I don't remember which video it was under, but anyway, he posted a comment that really caught my eye. And he said that one thing that he really was really important to him was that he did not want to have children outside of marriage. He, was, he seemed to be very adamant about that. And you know, that's not a huge, just a very different kind of position, especially for a young man to state it publicly. So like I said, it really got my attention so much so that I sent him a note and said, dude, can I interview you? Just write me and let's, you know, let's touch base. And he actually did respond. So today I'm going to be interviewing Justin Howard about his, his idea of family and parenting and being a dad and seeing what all of this means to him. Okay, let me get Justin on here. There you go. Hey, Justin, welcome to the show. Hey, good morning, Miss Cooper. How are you? I'm fine. I'm so glad that you took the time out to, you know, to do this with me because I think what you got, you know, your concepts are different than what we usually hear. At least, <laughs> I don't know, around here. So where do you, what part of the country do you live in? I live in the great state of Louisiana. Oh, okay. Well, yeah, I've spent a little time there. <laughs> <laughs> That's a nice, okay, so let me, you know, give us a little background about um, where you came up with this concept. I mean, what, how did you arrive at this? Was it like from observation, seeing other people be baby daddies? You say, oh, no, that's not for me. Or is this like a family value, a, a faith-based thing? What, where did you come up with this? That's fair enough. Okay, well, actually, you know, growing up in Alexandria, where I reside now, I moved away for a year when I was 18 years of age in Baton Rouge. And I actually spent some time in Jackson, Mississippi. One of the things that didn't work out at Bellhaven College, I had to come back home. But ever since I was actually 15 years of age, I made it up in my mind that it doesn't make any sense to become a baby daddy. I don't want a baby's mother I don't want to sit there and do that because I realized what my mother had to go through. Now, even though we don't like agree on a lot of things to this day, <laughs> there's a lot of things that we don't agree to this day. But one thing I always told her was this, I know that you had to work and bust your behind, you know, to take care of me and my sister, my older sister, who also resides in Alexandria. I just don't want my child to have to go through that because the pressures of actually growing up black in America, we see what's going on in the country today. At this moment, we see what's going on. I don't want my child to suffer without a father being there. And I don't want my wife to actually go through that either. Because like I said, I wanted to make sure I was married and we actually stable for a few years. I just don't want her to go through that because see, actually, for me, most importantly, it's just, although I don't agree with a lot of the women and what they do in this particular area in Alexandria, I don't want any woman to have to go through that. I don't want to see anybody go through that. That's not a good attitude to have. And that does not show a proper balance. We are not in slavery days anymore. It's not body over mind, it's mind over body. I don't want a woman to have to go through that. That's not fair, that's not right. Nothing good can typically come from a child or a bunch of children being raised simply by their mothers. It's not fair, it doesn't make any sense. The mother should not have to be the father and the mother of a child. I agree. Well, tell me this, um, Justin, do you get any pushback for your your stance, I mean, because, you know, we got to face the facts. I mean, these days, you know, everybody want to have a baby. They just don't care. And, you know, they some of them have two, three, four. Men have babies by different women. It's just a hot mess. So mm -hmm. your position is very refreshing, but mm -hmm. I'm, I'm wondering how much people, you know, taunt and tease you and ridicule you about oh, it. Oh, absolutely. Absolutely. They do, they do it a lot. And... I mean, not my like immediate like family, but you know, my aunties, they always ask me, well, Justin, I'm pretty sure that you have your inbox full and I'm pretty sure that you have someone texting you. But I tell them, well, for one, that's not your business because I'm not gonna tell you because I, I don't like to 
reveal romantically, you know, stuff, whatever. That's not anybody's business. I keep that private. They talk too much. And I know that you're going to probably touch on that, but, but they talk too much. But like I said, I do get pushback. And when I was talking on uh, social goats, I want to say in 2018, I went up to Shreveport, Louisiana. We was talking about like kids, family, holiday and stuff. And uh, the host had asked me, well, Justin, I noticed that you were not as serious about getting into like a serious relationship with a woman with children. And I was like, well, hold on, let me clarify. And one of the other young ladies, she didn't really take too, you know, well to it. And I was like, well, hey, it's not a disrespect or a slight to single mothers because my mother was a single mother herself. It's just that I don't want to have anybody go through that. And she just kept picking at me. She just kept picking. See, she didn't understand. She thought I was making a, a reference towards her. But I don't, me personally, I don't know where this whole culture is with having multiple children's women. And then, of course, it's like it's a den of motherhood or whatever. I don't, I don't understand it. Like I was watching a piece of, uh, you know, like like the bits and pieces come up on Facebook, mm-hmm. like, like the pages. I saw this clip where young jock, where he had like his uh, wife where he separated to and all of the other women. And I'm just sitting there and, and I'm just in an orb of confusion. And I'm like, <laughs> dude, why, what what good is out of that situation? They getting ready to fight each other. I mean, the one that you, I mean, the one that you're with now is actually not your wife, but your wife is actually legally married to you, but you're not with her. I don't understand that. It's like you want wifely benefits, but girlfriend bullshit happening. I don't, I just never understood that. You got me. I just, I just can't with these, with these people. I don't know what kind of lifestyle choices they're making or why they're making them, why there's so much need for all this to have all these different women. It's like, what does that do for you? I mean, why can't you be using that energy to do something positive for the kids you already got? Why are you chasing around and mm-hmm. trying to make more? It's mm-hmm. just, I don't know. I don't get it. That's one reason why I really wanted to talk to you. Yeah, and I, and honestly, like, as men, like, I mean, you know, in Louisiana, like, some of us, like, we get a little bit more compliments than others. Some of us, if we don't p- portray, like, a particular persona, we're not even going to get looked at. But there are some areas, though, I can immediately literally walk into the room and there are women that are just like, like in my face, like sharks after a seal. I mean, because, of, I mean, because like the reddish skin and I even had, a, I have a homeboy. Well, I had a homeboy. He was like real bright. You remember what Christopher Williams looked like? Uh-huh. They, the singer, he had like that, uh, that little cut and that curly hair and he was tall and he was lean. And he played, he played a wide receiver on our football team. We had a semi-pro team that won a championship not too long ago. And uh, we was out one day and I'm like, look, man, if you all are gonna hit the sheets, you're grown people, keep it to yourself. Y'all do what y'all do, but please use a condom. It's bad enough that we're hitting the sheets as it is. Use a condom. Don't make a child from it. And you know, doggone well, you ain't gonna wanna be with the woman. Don't sit up there and do that. She might actually like you, you know, at least think enough of her. Mm-hmm. I mean, <laughs> well, I think they should also be thinking about, you know, the lives of the children. It shouldn't seem to be a lot of decision making made in the heat of the moment. And they don't think about, OK, well, I have a video on my channel called and then what? And this is a perfect example. OK, well, if I do this, well, then what? Because it's going to come this baby. Then it's going to be a drama. And then I'm going to have to be tapped for 18 years of child support. And then this kid's going to grow up without the daddy because I'm not going to be here because I'm going to be on about my business with some other woman. And, then, you know, so they don't think about that. And they're just caught up in what's happening right this second. That's it. And that, well, that, tell me this. Do your friends, your close friends, have the same belief system that you do? Well, I just had a best friend to get married in September. You know, that's a good thing uh, for him. I have another best friend who actually has been more of a best friend to me because I've had to, of course, try to critique him and show him things. And I'm like, look, man, I don't want it to seem like I'm trying to break your character down, man, but I care about you enough to tell you. He moved with his brother to San Antonio. He's now working. He got him a license. He's getting ready to get him a vehicle. And the lady that he's talking to now, She's she's Nigerian. She has her own business. 
And I mean, he said, hey, look, man, I'm really excited about this one and everything. And I was like, well, and I'm glad that we, I'm, I'm glad that you brought this up because one thing I told him, because it was an, it was an incident between him and his brother and some of his children, not my best friend's children, because he didn't the have brother's to, children. He, right. And I was like, let me tell you something. Like I always told you all, whenever y'all come to hit me up for advice, I appreciate y'all doing that. Always keep the family, mother-in-law, brother-in-law, brother, sister, uncle, whoever, keep them out of your damn business when it comes to relationships. It's not their business. Don't repeat nothing she told you to them and vice versa. It's your relationship. Tell them to shut up. You can say, hey, you can talk to me about different things. If you got some experiences to share with me, share with me the experiences. If I don't receive you, don't keep trying to tell me about it. Leave me alone. Keep keep your relationship private. That's one thing that you know I uh, would would tell him, and I think that it's you know it's working and stuff. And I think he received me once I you know talked with him about that. But yeah, his stance is the same way. Even though he's a little different, he doesn't want to sit there and make a baby with a woman, and you know he's not like there with her or married with her either. And that's a good thing too. So. I don't think I don't think it's just simply me rubbing off on him. I really think that that was in him, you know, before we actually met in 2002. And we he just friends. needed somebody to kind of reinforce it and and let yeah. him. Yeah, yeah. Because okay. the thing is, he, he had this attitude, and, and a lot of men have had this attitude, and they have it. A, knock on wood. They, it's a lot of this here in this part of Louisiana, Alexandria. So if you come, if you come here, just be ready for it. They <laughs> have this thing. They have this thing. To where they just gotta go move in with a woman to avoid having to, you know, to avoid not, you know, to avoid being homeless. They'll just have to, you know, go move in with somebody. I'm like, hey man, get your own place. Here, disregard this, disregard that, disregard. Look, man, look, go get your own place or whatever. I mean, he was doing that for a little while. I'm like, I'm glad, I'm glad I was able to, you know, help him come out of that. And I'm glad that he came to his senses. He's in a bigger city. You know, he can focus on work now. He can go do his music. I'm really glad that he's able to do that. But now, did your friend there grow up without his dad? Yes, ma'am, he did. A lot okay. of, uh, that's very common. That's very common in these parts. That's very common in these parts. Men growing up without their fathers. It's very common. Hmm. Okay, Justin. So now we come to the part. Now you have this vision, you know, you want to get married. What does marriage mean to you? What does marriage mean to me? Well, what it means to me is me and a woman that's on this planet, we have came together, not just so much in holy matrimony, but we have came together to fill each other's sentences. We have came, you know, with each other to provide balance and peace. I mean, we're going to have arguments. We're going to have disagreements. But as long as we balance each other out and as long as there's love and as long as there's affection and she understands where I'm coming from and if she allows me to understand her, if she allows me to understand her, you know, ask her questions, you know, baby, why do you do this whenever you uh, do that? Hey, I noticed that she was kind of withdrawn whenever we went to uh, the, the meeting uh, at the economical development plan. I noticed that you kind of looked at another young lady a certain way and then you kind of withdraw, like that type of thing. You know, I'm going to ask her those type of questions. I'm going to put myself in a position where I can constantly learn about her. I mean, like I said, but balance, balance, love, peace. And she won't be getting all of these women in her inbox telling her, oh, your man was trying to holler at me. Now, I'm, I'm not going to do that. <laughs> I'm, not, no, I'm not the cheating type. I'm not going to do that. If I'm with you, I'm with you. And if I choose not to be with you, hey, look, I can't do this no more. I mean, right. she's going to get honesty, but she's going to get respect at the same time. That's the way to do it. You know, if you're done, you're done. If you're not, you, you know, make it work. Okay, so let's talk about this. What kind of woman are you looking for? Let's say you're looking for your wife. What are you looking for? You know I'm nosy. What, what, what are you looking <laughs> for? I'm just going to be honest. I'm like, hmm. Okay, what kind of woman are you looking for? What kind of 
qualities do you consider to be wife material? What kind of material? Well, I remember well, one thing that, that's on the top of my head at this moment. I almost jumped out of my shoes when I heard, when I saw that video about women talking too much. Oh! <laughs> one thing that she cannot do is constantly filter out and throw out information, like bringing in information to me that's erroneous or telling it information that's erroneous. We cannot do that. That's one thing that's going to have to be like the pillar of our relationship. It's our relationship. If I want to share with somebody, like when I go do my uh, speaking or when I get ready to write my books, if I want to go and share that with somebody, I'll do that. But one component that's definitely going to be the pillar of our marriage is she can't talk too much. I, I mean, I'm telling you, like, good luck with that. I like that part, <laughs> and I like that part of the, I like that part of your video, and I just, I went back to it the other day, and I saw it, and the, the, you know how, like, you said that one of the women be in the, you know, like restaurants, and they just be talking about, oh, this woman got a uh, raise, this man got that raise, and a lot of that actually happens actually here in this area. That's why a lot of issues happen because a man gonna end up having sex vicariously with his girlfriends like if it's if it's like a guy his homeboy end up having sex with his uh woman's homegirl because she didn't filter some information and took some information and gave to him now he went back door to tell his homeboy his homeboy approach her now the homeboy looking like oh he's understanding he just understand where i'm coming from whatever no he just wanted to get the draws. He wanted to run your credit up, wanted to mess over you. Now you pissed off, and then later on, you find out that your friend told him, now you can broke up a, a friendship or whatever. And like you said, it could have been avoided if you had kept your mouth closed. Yeah. Women have to understand that not all of us are decent. Some of us are decent, and we look like creeps. Some of us are nice, and we look like we bad guys. And there are some guys who are ultimately evil and hateful, but they are just, they come across as so good. They come across as so decent. Like yesterday, now I'm, you know, watering out my little uh, front patio area. I have all my work clothes and everything. And this lady, you know, walks up to me and she starts, you know, asking me about the, you know, like the apartment and everything. And she just, she's just looking at me. I'm like, man, what are you looking at? Because she was asking about how much the rent was here and everything of that nature. And she started, she's like, what do you work at? I was like, well, ma'am, I work at a youth facility, the Renaissance Home for Youth. And she looked at me from head to toe, like, you work there? And I was like, yes, ma'am, I'm just, I'm off right now. I'm just, you know, doing yard work. I mean, it's easy to get caught up into that whole prowess, that whole game that they play. Oh, my God. She saw you for 10 seconds and she made all them kind of judgments? Yeah. Oh, my but, goodness gracious. That happens, that happens sometimes. That happens sometimes. And unfortunately it's 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 very superficial sometimes in the dating world in this area okay it so is. what what's on your list though i got to ring you back i'm trying to figure out what's your wife material list looking like okay so we know you want somebody who knows how to keep her mouth shut and keep her relationship between the two of you okay mm -hmm. what else a woman that's kind silly you know goofy like if i'm just sitting there you know, watching TV, you know, she might come up and just start playing with my nose. I'm like, come on, baby, stop. I'm trying to watch TV. Like, I mean, you know, and then she start playing with my ears. You know, somebody that's not afraid to, you know, get me to smile when I'm just sitting there like so. Like, I mean, if I'm just real serious, I mean, somebody that's not afraid to just, you know, just, you know, like to break the ice. Right. Hey, hey baby, you know what, baby? Well, come on, let's go get something to eat. I said, no, but I got food in there. No, 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 no. I'm going to take you to go get you something to eat. Somebody that's not afraid to, you know, explore things like new, spontaneous, uh, kind, silly, you know, goofy, you know, okay. that can kind of you know, balance my, because, you know, I have a quirky side to me. And even though that quirky side is, you know, kind of silenced throughout the years, I'm still kind of, you know, quirky myself because I know that life is short. And which brings me to my next quality that I'm looking for somebody that's going to value her life that's going to take care of herself 
and that's not going to allow me or her to you know be unhealthy not just so much like with the eating habits not, i'm not not just so much eating habits but with behaviors like if she sees me get angry hey baby you need to try to do it this way you don't need to go and do that that type of thing i mean she can correct me and she can speak up to me she can tell me hey baby let's try this or whatever someone who can you know correct me and say hey baby i saw that you did this wrong let's try it this way. Someone that won't just sit there and, you know, not that she'll nag at me, but someone that'll look at me and tell me, well, hey, I understand where you're coming from, but baby, let's try it this way. This may help you in the business world. Don't do it like that. Don't tell them, all right, God bless, and then you jump up and walk away because that'll negate what you're trying to do, that type of thing. Like if she- Okay, you know, so I, I understand, I hear you saying, so you want somebody who's kind, Great sense of humor um, and who understands you, who's mm -hmm. smart, who's mm -hmm. got great uh, emotional intelligence. Mm -hmm. I'm just breaking it down for what I he just heard you say. I'm assigning right. labels to it. Right. Great right. emotional intelligence and someone that you can trust. You that trust her good. thinking. You trust how she thinks about you. And you mm -hmm. trust her vision of where the two of you can go as a team. Mm -hmm. Am I Absolutely. correct? Okay. Absolutely. Absolutely. And us working together. And it's a cooperation type of thing, not a competition type of thing. Because as a, as a man, I've learned that although if someone tells you something, as long as they're not breaking you down, breaking your character down or trying to humiliate you, right. you can receive that type of correction. And if she's within the, the, the boundaries of that correction, you know, you can receive that help and just allow her to, you know, work with you and cooperate because, you know, as men, we can put up walls too. Yeah. And I know I'm no different. I know when, you know, when a guy really, res when there's mutual respect, um, mm -hmm. that kind of conversation comes naturally and it's never with malice because she loves you. She doesn't want to see you mess up. You know, she don't want you just stumbling and bumbling because if you stumble and fall, then the whole family stumbles and falls. So she's like, oh, no, we got to make sure this don't happen. So, you know, a guy who trusts his woman enough to know that that's what's on her mind will, will be openly welcoming any uh, ideas that she has. So good for you. Exactly. You know what I mean? Yeah, that's my job. See, I interview, but then I translate what you say into words that the ladies can understand on the other end. Look at that big old cheese-eating smile you got. Okay, so <laughs> tell me this, Justin. As you move through your 32 now, what kind of steps are you taking to prepare yourself to be this husband and father? Well, one thing that I'm doing uh, right now is I'm, you know, close to uh, finishing school. I had to stop due to, you know, financial uh, issues. And it was pretty much good, you know, with financial aid. It was a, it was a mistake. And mm, I actually proved my school to be wrong and how they handled a certain issue with my financial aid. It was a gaffe. It was, a, it was an error on their part. But even though it was an error on their part, I still ended up having to take care of it and pay for it. So I just went back to school in the spring of 2019. I went in the fall and I also went this spring as well. I was looking to go during the summer, but with the coronavirus, COVID-19, that kind of slowed things down. So it right. looks like if I'm going to go to the next semester, like starting in like September, I'm going to take like the B term because I do most of my classes online and I'm being, a, and I'm a senior now. So I don't have too much longer, even though I have to come out of pocket with it. I don't have too much longer. And then I, I really don't, you know, stress out about it anymore. I really don't take it to heart because even though it may take a little bit longer, I know it's more meaningful. And I'm approaching like 10 years at my job. So like I'm going into my eighth year this year at, at the job I've been and I've been working with uh, juveniles and, you know, like from the age of 17 to uh, third, well, actually, our facility is from 11 to 17. I've been working with them for the past uh, going on eight years, but I've actually worked with uh, small children before. And I actually, I actually started that when I was 17. 
So from 17 all the way to now, I've gained a lot of experience working with children that are like from ages of like 10 all the way to 17. Are these children um, like any way connected to the system in some way? Are they troubled children, delinquents? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Okay. When I was when I was working with you know when I was doing my praise and worship like courses and uh, of course Sunday school classes and, and everything, it was like kids that were like ten to like twelve, it's like preteens. And then of course when I was at the boys and girls club, it was kids that were from eight years old to thirteen years old. And when I started in two thousand thirteen at the youth facility that I'm working at now. It was kids from 11 to 17. So for the past eight years, for the past going on eight years, excuse me, it has been individuals that were connected with the system in some type of way. And all of the men, the young men that I work with, all of the boys that I work with, without the exception of maybe a few of them, handful of them, there's always an absence of the father in the home. Now, some of them do have a father figure in the home. It may be the mother's boyfriend. It may be the mother's stepdad. And maybe just three, no, I forgot about him, four. Four times where the biological mother and father were in the home and only once were they married. So, yes. So, oh. pretty sure you can imagine some of the abuse, the health problems, the mental illness and emotional stress that these young people are coming to our facilities with. I, I'm, I'm pretty sure you can only imagine that. I mean, no, my mom did, um, my mother did foster care for like 18 years. And uh, we got to see a lot of that. I hate to interrupt, but where are you? I'm in the uh, San Francisco area. San Francisco? Oh, yeah, you see, in my... Um, I have a best friend who's in that area now work, uh, with her husband working. And of course, they're, they're doing music and he's like trying to like make cologne. I, I can only imagine the type of stress that she had. How long did she do it for? Mm, she had, well, sure, she did daycare and then she did foster care. So in total, she was in that business for like 25 years. With daycare and foster care, both. Well, no, I mean, just saying, you know, she did. Ooh. She did yeah. Ooh. I almost had a heart attack. Oh no, God. no, no. First, she just did daycare, I think, for about, I don't know, okay. about 15 years. And then she started doing the foster care, too. After we all moved out the house, because it was a big old 10 room house in San Francisco, converted Victorian. It was two flats, and my dad made it into one. It was huge. And, you know, we all moved out. So she, could, she got some foster kids. And then she rambling around the house looking at my daddy and he looking at her. They didn't, they didn't have, you know, I mean, they used to having kids in the house. So they got some foster kids. Wow. I mean, that's, yeah. I mean, that, that, that is kind of, you know, stressful. And the foster system here, I, I honestly don't know what to say. I'll just, um, I'll just say, I hope that that particular system here, here gets better because are you Someone, are you planning to go into social work or anything like that? With all your experience that you have, dude, you would be just phenomenal. Well, I mean, social work, I won't let that slip my notice. But one thing that I want to do, like I said, I'm going to market myself as a speaker and as a life coach. I'm going to uh, do that. Um, but I want to make sure that I know and I can write down and focus on everything that I'm going to you know, tell my clients what to do and how to get their, their lives on track. Because, I mean, I know that wellness and balance is something that, of course, I know I can assist with uh, bringing with people. I've worked with a few people, you know, before already in that, that form. But I certainly would not dismiss the idea of becoming a social worker. I mean, eventually, I would not dismiss that at I mean, idea at all. Because when you just sit and you just, one day after me and, a coworker were debating about sports. I mean, we just happened to be talking about LeBron James. And I'm like, look, I don't know, because I'm not really a basketball fan. Like, I mean, I'll, I'll go to a basketball game in person, but, you know, I don't know. But I sat there and I looked at those intakes. I mean, in all of the intakes that we've had in the past five years, the level of, of 
education in these uh, these young men that's coming in there. I mean, you have some young men that are 16 years old that are coming in there, and they have not been to school since the middle part of their eighth grade year. And, you know, for two years, they haven't been to school. And for maybe two or three years, not two or three, but two or three months, they were supposed to go to an alternative school that's on the other end of town. They get kicked out of there. Then it's just like they're dinner. So how are you going to take all of this and translate it into being a daddy or a husband? And what's all this background and experience going to do for you as a parent? I know right now that the responsibility falls on me, regardless of what I feel like, quote unquote, you know how some men say, quote, you don't understand the situation, quote unquote. Mm -hmm. I can say as much as I want to say about her. I can talk about her. I can dog her out. I can do whatever I want to. I can flail, kick. I can throw things. I can curse her out. Regardless, just, you know, just throwing things out. I don't actually do any of that. But regardless, <laughs> <laughs> regardless, the responsibility is on me. And whenever the children do not have mother and father, they're married together, working together, and having a vision on where they want their child to go, that's the result that you're going to get. And ultimately, the responsibility is going to be on you. I'm taking that in as it's going to be my responsibility. It doesn't matter. And it's going to fall back. It's Are you to open to having these kind of discussions? Like, say, you know, during the dating phase uh, with the woman, like to get an idea of what her concept is as far as being a parent. You know, a lot of times when people are dating, it's all about the fun and the hot, you know, between the sheets moments and, oh, we doing this and we going there. And one thing they neglect to do is talk about this, what their vision is for their family and for their children, their parenting styles, their expectations, uh, mm -hmm. the goals they would have for their children, how they handle money, all these kinds of things that are very important that can just ruin your marriage. So are you 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 seem like a pretty straightforward guy, like but you yes. know, that's something that you would bring to the table. You okay with doing that? Yeah, it's like maybe by the second or you know, third date, you know, that's you know, something that I would definitely wanna, you know, have a sit down and talk with her about. I mean, maybe before or after maybe rather just rather than a late night movie, we go to like a mid afternoon movie and then whenever we leave it'd be like, you know, six or seven or seven thirty. We'll just veer off and we'll just go walk around and talk in the park about it. Or uh, if we just, you know, get some sneakers or something and we'll just go and, you know, walk for maybe about an hour or two. And I'm just listening to where she's coming from. Because like you said, that's, that's good to know where the other person is. And communication, that is definitely going to be a, a fabric of the actual, you know, marriage itself. I mean, as well. And, and speaking of which... Some of these young men, they do not know how to communicate. They, some of them don't even know how to sign their own name. We have to teach them that. Sometimes it, I'm, I'm like, you have got to be kidding me. I'm just thinking that in my mind, but it just floors me sometimes because you have an individual that'll come in there and he may know how to load a gun or roll a blunt or know how to comprehend what someone is saying to him about going to steal drugs or going to steal someone's property or something of that nature. And this individual cannot even sign his name. So and there's a functionally just, illiterate. Yes. Yes, ma'am. It, it, it is a lot of functionally illiteracy that's going on in these group homes and in foster care, DCFS custody, OJJ custody, uh, CASA, a local organization here in Alexandria, it, it, is, it is sometimes just unbearable because they'll come in there and they'll sometimes they'll be like, yes, ma'am, no, ma'am, yes, sir, no, sir. And then when, and when you tell them, you like when you're doing like the little intake, all right, I know you got black shoes, you got three white shirts, et cetera, et cetera. Okay, sign your name here. Huh? What do you mean? Sign, sign your name here. They'll take it, they'll take the pen and they'll just write their initials. No, I need your signature. Well, how you do that? 
you know, I mean, that type of thing. They, oh, so they can print, but they can't do, they can't do cursive. Well, they don't even know what print or signature means. Sometimes you tell them to print their name and they're like, well, I don't have a computer, sir. And I'm like, no, no, right. Just write your name. <laughs> you, have to tell them, you have to tell them to write their name. And if you tell them to sign, sometimes they won't, they, they, they really won't know. And so these young men are going to grow up and they're going to be dating somebody and they're going to be having a baby with somebody out of wedlock, most likely. And some of them actually have came in there with, you know, children. Some of them actually have had children. Coming Already. In. Oh, boy. So, well, tell me this, Justin, when you look at, I mean, when you look at the state of, of black men and women in their relationships, what do you feel or say, I don't know, maybe the top three problems? What's keeping us apart? What's keeping us from making progress together as a team, as a unit? What the heck is going on? From my perspective. Yeah, because you're young. You're younger than me. So yeah, you know, you're gonna, is, plus you're a male. So your viewpoint is going to be different. Yeah. Now, with the older generation, I honestly think that y'all definitely have much better relationships with us. Well, well, not with us, but better relationships than us. And you would think that it would be the other way around because you would think that some people who are more seasoned and mature, they would have a harder time dealing with social media and adjustment. But it seems to me that individuals who are 40 plus, 50 plus, 60 plus, 70 plus even, it's like they have better relationships. Individuals like myself and a little bit younger, we have a hard time because of these, these three things that I've noticed. Okay. I'm all ears. Communication. We don't know how to communicate. Passive aggressive. A lot of times you see that. A lot of shade, a lot of shady remarks and behaviors. And whenever you be assertive with someone and you let them know what's going on, some people will take assertive as being aggressive. So the lack of communication, like, oh, ain't no man going to tell me to do this. Ain't no man going to tell me to do that. Hey, man, ain't no woman going to tell me to do this. Ain't no woman going to tell me to do that. The whole back and forward type of thing. Nobody wants to let their guards down. Nobody wants to yield. You have to yield to communication, and there's a lack of that. That's one thing. Two, a lot of these young ladies and men, they talk too damn much. Okay? Thirdly, go ahead. <laughs> oh, I'm just saying, I agree. Just always running their mouths, just telling all their business, just making all kinds of problems for themselves. And thirdly, individuals they want to get serious about a relationship and serious about their requirements not just so much as standards but their requirements they want to make all of these requirements after they made all these screwed up mistakes after people have told them not to do this or not to do that but the people who was telling them that were credible sources like for example my mother hey justin look I know that you are a respectable young man. I know that you, all you run about is working, finishing school, and you're just not with all the nonsense. You're not in the streets. You stay at home. But, baby, you have to be careful when a woman says that, that, that. Like, I'm using that for example. If I don't heed to that after my cousin tell me that or after my best friend told, I told you earlier about in, in San Francisco, hey, Jay, man, look out because of that, that, that. If I don't heed that, then something happens. Years down the line, hey, look, I require this, I require that, I require this, I require that. Okay. Um, making unrealistic demands is pretty much what I'm trying to say. Those are the three things that are, that are going on and that are happening. And I see. And you see, that's group. like the 35 and underage group? Yes, ma'am. Yes, ma'am. Big time. Okay. People who are older, like than that eight, that category, a lot of you have much better relationships than what we have. That's what I see knock on wood. And I, I, I promise, like, I, I thought that it would be the other way around. I thought it would be the other way around, but no. I think a lot of it has to do, you know, my, my age group, we were the last one where the fathers were more consistently in the home yeah. and not just there, but I mean, involved, you know, cause you could be in the home, but you never really interact with your kids. You don't take them nowhere. You don't have any conversation with them. You don't spend any time with them, but you're physically there. Um, there's those kind of dads, 
But, you know, you have the fathers that actually will get the kids and take them off somewhere, take them on trips, go on vacations with them, sit there with them and help them discipline them, make sure they learn how to do different things, teach them about life. I mean, that's the kind of dad that I had and, you know, my friends, but we don't see much of that anymore. Yeah. I mean, very see, rare. Learning, you know, what I'm saying? Knowing, knowing how to live. I think a lot of people overlook that, like knowing how to live. I think a lot of young people, like, you know, we overlook that because you see a lot of the rat racing that's going on and we vicariously are using materialistic things to try to outdo the other person. And we're always talking. It's like a never ending circle that just, they're still going talk, 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 trying to jump over the other person. Somebody gets a new car. Oh, you ain't spending your money on a new car. Person chooses to keep the car that they have. Oh, why don't you get a new car? That thing raggedy. Or if a person stays in an apartment or a condo, or you, oh, excuse me, you need to go buy a house. You need to go buy a house. I go buy a house. The person go and buy a house, like, well, shit, it's just you there. Why are you doing that? Like, it's always something. Yeah, always some criticism about what you need yeah. to do. I mean, people, a lot of people, they need to understand this one thing. They need to learn how to live. And whenever you figure out your money, understand your money, understand your situation, understand your vision and your goals, you need to be working towards that and stop spending so much time worrying about other people and what they're doing and stay out of their business. And if you don't have a relationship, I, I know you I know you get this a lot. If you don't have a relationship, just shut up and wait. I mean, just learn how to deal with yourself first and handle what you're supposed to handle first, shut up and wait. Yeah, oh no, they can't. Do. So you end up a lot of people will just say, well, I'm tired of waiting, so I'm just going to take, you know, I'm just going to deal with what's here. And so then they end up all messed over because they settled for something for Mr. Right Now, Miss Right Now. And mm -hmm. then they realize they got themselves into a, a dilemma. And mm -hmm. that's not time you should have been spending dealing with that individual. So and tell yeah. me this, Justin, yeah. um, when you envision yourself married and with your family and stuff, what kind, I mean, is your wife working? Is she working full-time, part-time, stay-at-home mom? What's your vision for that? What's my vision for that? Well, I do believe in a working woman. I do believe in a working woman. If she's going to work Maybe I'll ask her, like, I mean, with help, like, with, you know, groceries, little small little things there. But me personally, I'm typically going to just take care of, like, the mortgage and the rent myself, the mortgage, rent, and utilities myself. I mean, I'm going to make sure that the cars are up and running. Hey, baby, give me your keys. I'm about to go to AutoZone. I'm about to go grab me some pizza. I'll bring you some back. If you want some pizza, <laughs> I'll bring you some back. Because I'm not going to let you just simply eat off my plate all the time. But I'll I'll go and you know let me go and take care of the, the uh, cars or whatever. Hey man, you know send this my uh, white vehicle. Look, give me a, give her all change. Blah blah blah. Give me a printout of, and a printout of what also needs to be done. You see what I'm saying? Right. Like, hey man, you know you got another six months for this filter to be changed. All right, give me a printout of that. Hey baby, look, everything good. I got your all change or whatever. So in case you start hearing something or something starts malfunctioning. This is what needs to be done so that way you won't be so scared. Like if I have to work late or something like that, or if you if your job might run late and you know, you don't want I don't want you sitting up there scared, like, oh God, oh God, oh God, you know, I'm just, you know, thinking about Yeah, that. honey, because there's nothing worse than you driving and the car starts bucking or some new smell comes out or it starts making some odd sound. Mm -hmm. And it's like your heart freezes into your throat. That is like the worst. Wanna, I don't want her to be, you know, scared like that and uh, that form. I'm, but like, I, like I'm going to tell her, just hold on and keep this inside your glove compartment. And in due time, we'll go and we'll work to get, you know, the card, you know, fixed up piece by piece, like the air filter. And since it gets really hot in Louisiana, one thing that is good for a man to do, now a lot of men don't do this. One thing that is good for a man to do here in Louisiana in the month of April and May, I've already done mine, you need to get you a fluid flush because we use our air a lot more here. Oh, yeah. Yeah, it's hot as heck down there. Yeah. And you need to get refilled with the, the Freon and you need to get an oil change. 
you need to get a, a not a regular one, but a big one, like a multi inspection, the synthetic. You need to make sure the spark plugs are working and everything, a tune up basically. Okay, uh, well, that's all about you though. I'm trying to hear about what I mean, that's nice that you're gonna do that. But I'm trying to hear about what you're expecting from her. Like, what is it that when you envision your wife and her, is she working full-time, part-time? How much housework do you do? How much child care do you do? How, what do you expect from her? Well, oh, you, you kind of, you kind of back into a corner there. You well, no, it. I mean, it's like, because you have, you know, we all, have, I mean, I know I did before I got, I mean, I really wasn't thinking about getting married until he asked me. But then once he asked, I started thinking about, you know, what I, what my vision was, how I wanted to be living my life and what I was expecting, you know, from his side. And um, it, you know, it was kind of, it was a picture. And then I, you know, I had like a map to work from, and this is what I, what I had envisioned. And that's, you know, was the basis from which I got married. Gotcha. Okay. Fair enough. Now I'm going to, you know, be, you know, clean around, I mean, the house, I expect her to do the same um, for us, like her working. If she wants to work, she can. And most of the money is going to be hers. Um, but I do expect her, you know, not to be so, um, what's the word, carefree with her money. Just in case something happens, we can depend on each other in that form. As far as the children, I do not expect her to actually make all the decisions with the children. And if I incorporate something, let's just say if it's my son or our daughter, whatever it is, if I incorporate something, let's just say if I tell Junior, hey, look, man, you're not going to that party. Hey, man, look, whenever you go to a football practice, don't be telling the coach what you want to play. You need to be quiet and let him tell you what you're going to play, that type of thing. If she'll allow me to put in, of course, my manly and masculinity fatherhood, inside of the equation that's what i would expect her to do and there are times where i'm going to back up and let her put a woman's touch inside of the two so that way we both can learn from each other and of course the children can learn from both of us because a child has to learn something from his mother and something from his father to be effective in the world oh definitely definitely you don't need to just simply hear a woman's perspective all the time and he certainly doesn't need to simply hear a man's perspective perspective all the time he needs to hear both of them so I would expect her to, you know, be a part of the child rearing. Um, if she's working, she can uh, pretty much have her money. Um, but, you know, I would expect her to be, you know, frugal like I am with my uh, money as well. So in the event that something does happen, we can be, you know, set up and we can be, you know, well healed and balanced in the best way because you never know what happened. Oh, yeah. Plus, you want to save for your kids' college funds and all that old stuff. So, um yeah, yeah, you people, guys might want to buy a house. I mean, all kind of stuff. Yeah, and people here can't drive either, Miss Deborah. People here in Louisiana cannot drive. They can't. I'm sorry. But they are smashing into each other. What's going on? Yeah, people don't have enough. I mean, people don't have the common sense. They don't. Oh, let's Dude. see. Yeah. Maybe so you I'm, should move. <laughs> you finish school. Yeah, I might. I don't know. But I tell you what, though, like, I mean, it's the, um, we have, like, the highest rate for insurance. Insurance is, I mean, very high. You know, I'm just, you know, throwing that at you. But, yeah. <laughs> so, do you have any other um, things you want to say to um, the, the ladies' listeners about marriage or being a dad, your dream of being a dad and all that stuff? Well, no, no, I, I mean, I really don't. But my advice uh, to them would be is to continue to grow. And, it's, and our black women t t definitely need to, uh, you know, learn this as well as our black men too. Let us all continue to grow. Let us get, um, of course, a lot better and enhance all of our abilities when it comes to, you know, ourselves, like personal enrichment, like, Get better at communicating. Get better at listening. Write down some of the things that you're going to say and how you say it. Or if you have a good friend, ask them, hey, how does this sound when I say this? Or if it's a stranger, if you see them in the mall, how does it sound when I say this? Work on yourself and be willing to grow and be willing to accept the proper criticism 
from your mate. And most importantly, be careful what you say to other people about your relationship and keep other people, as, especially if you're a man, and, and I'm just going to say it, if you're a man, tell her, tell Tell your mother and tell her to tell your, your mother-in-law to stay out of your relationship with her like that. She don't need to know your damn credit score or what y'all getting ready to buy. Keep your people out of your relationship. And if you're a man, if you're a man, tell your mama to tell your nosy ass aunties to stop asking her questions too whenever you at work. Is that fair? <laughs> Is that fair? Oh, yeah, because the mothers be too knee-deep in it, too, talking about, well, my son this and my son that. It's like, hell, get out of here. You know, I had a really hard time with my mother-in-law. She got some choice words from me. His mother, his auntie, they all got it. It's like, you don't, you don't live here. You don't run nothing up in this house. That's just, no. So is- I totally understand where you're coming from. Yeah. And I mean, once I, I mean, I'm, of course, I'm back into a relationship with single now, but once I'm back into a relationship again, those are going to be the things that I'm setting forth or whatever. And that, that probably can actually be hard for, you know, a young lady, like if she sees that, um, oh, excuse me, like it, can, it can actually be kind of intimidating. You know, sometimes they say that, you know, you've heard this before, that men are intimidated by strong women. Mm-hmm. I think really is more true with young ladies of this generation, they're intimidated by the mothers of these men because they're trying to make such an impression because they know it's actually hard to raise a child in this area. So if a young lady sees, well, damn, I mean, Justin's mom is kind of like, ooh, I'm not going to go over there and mess with that. She might like me, but she might be scared to say something because she don't want to have to go through that. I so, you, and I told my mother, I mean, this like a year ago when I was dating before me and the young lady that I was dating before we broke up respectfully, I had to tell her, look, mom, if I bring her around, I don't want to hear no smart remarks from my, my sister, my auntie, you. I don't want nobody looking at her funny. Don't get my little cousin to come up and ask her no stupid ass questions. Don't do none of that. Leave me alone. This is my relationship and I'm bringing her around to show y'all that I care for her and this is going to be a part of me. Hopefully. Now it didn't work out, but we left on good terms. And the well, that, But that's still the, the, the platform, yeah. the foundation that you laid is mm-hmm. a good one so that they still should be knowing when you bring the next one to keep oh, yeah. that. That didn't change. So, oh. you know, do the act right. Well, yeah, right now she's actually happily married. She uh, gave birth to uh, my son two years ago. I mean, and it's a blessing. And, you know, she, you know, speaks to me, you know, occasionally through social media. Hey, Justin, how you doing? I was just speaking, that type of thing. But one thing she definitely can say about me is that I did not make it stressful for her whenever I discussed my mother or brought her around with the family. If we was having a barbecue or something, that's one thing that she, she, she'll forever respect me for. Because that can be very stressful for a woman. So what's your timeline? You trying to get married? What you do? You have a date in mind? An age? Mm-mm. Nope. But don't be trying to be no 45-year-old having a new baby. Because <laughs> I'll, get, I'll get on my channel and talk about you real fast. <laughs> <laughs> Dudes walking around with their hair all gray talking about this is my baby. I'm like, you need to be slapped. <laughs> You're going to be in your 60s collecting Social Security by the time the kid graduates from high school good. Get out of here. This is too old. <laughs> but I've enjoyed this chat, Justin. Thank you very much oh, for the time for me. And I definitely like enjoyed it or whatever. I mean, I'm I'm glad that, you know, like I, I did this. At first I was kind of, you know, wrestling with Zoom, but you know, I'm glad we did this as well. So Yes, yeah, so thank you. Thank you for your time. And I hope you have a pleasant day. You too. Bye bye. Okay.